it's actually really difficult to set off a nuclear warhead. You have to have a set of perfectly placed and timed explosive charges. And unless all of them go off perfectly in sync, you won't get a nuclear reaction. The warhead is discovered 100 feet from the launch complex's entry gate. Battered, but basically intact. We can now explain the chain of events that lead to the disaster. The two men team working on the missile, they drop a heavy metal socket that falls between the duct walls and the missile itself. The falling socket ruptures the missile's hydrazine fuel tank. Highly volatile and explosive vapor leaks into the silo. Teams sent in to investigate discover lethal concentrations of hydrazine vapor. An order comes over the radio to turn on the ventilation fans to vent the hydrazine vapor. That probably causes an electric spark, which ignites the hydrazine vapors in the silo. It ruptures the missile's oxidizer tank. Nitrogen tetroxide comes into contact with the leaking hydrazine. It causes a massive hypergolic explosion. The explosion launches a nine megaton warhead flying through the air, and it crashes to the earth some distance away, a bit dented, but undamaged. The state of Arkansas is spared the specter of nuclear annihilation. Although nobody is killed in the explosion, Livingston dies later after inhaling nitrogen tetroxide vapor. The Titan II maintenance structure at Little Rock Air Force Base is later renamed the Livingston Building in honor of the dead airman.